Hey, this is Rich with Black Catch. Uh, this is a video uh, part two of uh, two. Uh, it's a 2007 Dodge uh, four wheel drive, 48 RE with five nine. It's probably the latest version, probably uh, before they went to the six seven. So uh, it does uh, have an aftermarket tranny converter and stuff in it. But the customer bought it that way. Uh, he doesn't know anything about it, I believe, except uh, what he sees when he looks under the vehicle uh, and what the owner told him. So. Uh, the pan is full of metal, a lot of great metal and stuff like that, so we're going to get this thing uh, apart to the type of damage we have and what uh, we need to replace. So. It does have a, a ATS triple disc converter, I believe. Uh, I don't think they make a single disc with this many uh, bolt patterns. So, but this is going to be one heavy dude. And they do make a... Uh flywheel to match that yeah, if you do. really do want it now this truck did have a stock flywheel on it so these things do a lot of flexing uh, especially when you chip them up and stuff like that this truck's been chipped so you can see how bad the fluid looks uh, coming out of it got a little bit of wear on the hub here so we're gonna really uh, we're gonna be replacing the flywheel too they're just really bad about flexing Nasty fluid. Now this has been into before, of course we know that. Uh, but I'm curious to see how much of a 48 RE it is too. Uh, this got an output speed sensor. Got a little bit. This is magnetized here on the end, so it does attract a lot of trash and, and metal and stuff. So now uh, this here doesn't have a passenger cable. It physically has a uh, TV motor, uh, is what we call it. Uh, when you move the gas pedal up top, it turns. When you move the gas pedal, you push the gas, it turns like that. So and it mounts to these two bolts and sets up on top of this lever right here. Uh, when uh, they went totally throttled by wire, they added that uh, TV motor and stuff. Expensive motor, it's about 300 something dollars usually, if you can find them. Estimating, not guaranteeing that. This company makes uh, multiple levels of their units, so uh, they make stage one, two, three, uh, stuff like that. You know, we don't know what levels they are, we just know we, that's what we do. So. Now this here is your overdrive housing. Uh, it's got all your overdrive clutches, your direct clutch, uh, your overdrive planet, stuff like that in here. Now these are bad about cracking. We replace probably, oh, we do a lot of these. Uh, if you have any type of driveline vibration and the trucks are really bad about it, they'll crack this right above this bolt right here. And uh, you'll think it's a pan leaking or the uh, pin down out here at the bottom for the reverse band. There's also a pin right here that leaks. But most of the time it's actually got a crack right here if you had a bad driveline vibration. So you want to look at that. We see a lot of them. Change a lot of them. Now we do have an overdrive clutch right here. Now they have upgraded this uh, clutch pack right here. Let me kind of show you how they did it. Get my screwdriver down here, Trent. Yeah. Now. We don't take this snap ring out or leave this uh, wavy snap ring out on the uh, ones that have a tow haul button because we've learned uh, when you leave it out, uh, it causes a harsh downshift. It would tow haul, tow haul on when you come to a stop, you get a big bang out of it. So we quit doing it. But you actually, you got a flat snap ring here. You would stick a wavy snap ring next. And then you would put a, a thicker plate. And you can see here how they took and machined this plate right here to li leave that wave out. And then they added it one more clutch and one more steel. See, that's how they do that. But when you leave that wavy snap ring out, 
uh, you cause an issue, a customer complaint of having a harsh downshift with a tow haul button push. But we don't do it anymore. We like to put the extra clutch in there, yes, to make it uh, more uh, durable, but it also does uh, cause a problem. Now with the cable operated ones, we haven't seen anything uh, like that. We can go ahead and do the upgrade to those, but it's just the electronic ones that we've seen that issue with. So. wear down in these cases right here they're really bad about wearing uh, i don't know if trent can see this but we're gonna try we don't have our best flash yeah right we don't now. have our best flashlight i think you can see that down in there if you notice that snap ring groove has been pushed backwards that direction yes the, see where the snap ring and now is. your end plate and your clearances get all jacked up because of that that wear right there yep if it's not too bad sometimes we can set the clearances up and compromise for that but if it gets too bad we just can't do it because we run out of shim shims to do it with so we change a lot of these just for that one reason but it's very important your overdrive direct clutch is in here with your planetary and your one-way sprag is down in here too. I'm going to do another video probably tomorrow on disassembling this and putting it in the press and uh, showing, you, showing you this big old spring that's in here and, and a, wet, uh, a ply plate that you can't, uh, we replace every one of them, but if you do it at home, uh, you can't do it unless you, unless you watch me do it. Let me show you. <laughs> so, but we'll get this apart real quick. We'll do a video on that tomorrow. Now, we uh, keep a ton of these plates around here, these apply plates, uh, because uh, they're different thicknesses. You can't see it, but it's just the way they're made, and we use them for set clearances and all kinds of things. So, these trannies, they got all kinds of places to check your end plates and stuff. Let me get And I promise you guys, we are gonna get a mic. <clears throat> all you non-believers. Right, now here you go. <laughs> now I'm gonna try to explain all the uh, places to set clearances at. See, this is a yellow shim right here. They make a blue or red, one that doesn't have no paint on it at all. They make these in different thicknesses right here. Okay? Also, this plate right here, this shim right here goes against that plate. They make these in different thicknesses, and this is how you set your cl clutch clearance up for this clutch here and the clutch that goes in here. So you got one, you got two. You got one, you got two. Two. Now we get a little bit farther down in here, and I'm going to show you some more places uh, where you set the clearances up for this tranny. Now these are, these can take up to seven hours to build. Um, they come in really jacked up, people messing with them, or a lot of pieces wore out. This is your band anchor adjustment right here, your nut and your pin. Uh, get a lot of these and the, and the fluid's cherry red and there's nothing in the pan or anything like that you always want to look down this connector and make sure it doesn't have fluid in it this connector does have a little bit of fluid in it these things are really notorious about shorting out in this connector right here and doing all kinds of crazy things and what it affects is the governor pressure sensor and solenoid uh, it causes all kinds of uh, speed issues shifting issues down shifting issues uh, all that type of stuff so Now this does have a real nice ATS pan on it. Well, 
I like about the ATS pans, they got a place for a temperature sensor. So if I take your monitor, I remember this one here was just uh, a ton of metal. I thought I'd see more, we could just scoop it out, but maybe this is a plus for the guy on, on part damage and stuff, so. Change the size on you. Got it. Now this is your standard filter right here that Chrysler makes for this unit. Uh, it's, it sucks off the bottom. That's why we like to get them off the, the put a deep pan to get it from sucking off the bottom all the time. And these pans help out a bunch by getting it off there like that. But the filter we like to use is a totally different filter. Uh, these 48 RE pumps and stuff, they're really high volume, but they turn uh, low speed. So they have to suck a lot of fluid, but turn a lot of, not turn a lot of RPM, and they move a lot of fluid. So we want to, we put these on there, that way they suck from the bottom, they suck from the top. They, they got a lot of fluid going through these filters real easy instead of having to suck it through one hole like that. Now this is an early model three speed filter. Like 72, 6 model, 440, 383, pickup is the same. But that's the type of filter we put on there. A lot better filter. Oh, you're fine. Now you can see the filter extension that come with the, the ATS pan. You got your governor pressure sensor and solenoid here. Uh, these are trashed, I mean, uh, these are the solenoids that uh, if the connector's got fluid in it, like I was telling you on top here, and it's got fluid in here, then it really affects these two right here because they can't calculate how fast the vehicle's going and stuff like that, so. Here's your overdrive and your uh, lock-up solenoids right here. These two right here. It's got the metal film like crazy. Everything you oh, touch has just got that that gray film all over it. Nasty, nasty. Anytime uh, you rebuild these units, you always want to replace this black uh, piece right here. This is what controls your neutral safety switch to turn on your backup lights. Uh, for it to start park, reverse neutral, and stuff like that. So you always want to replace this. They're kind of hard to find, but we keep them in stock, so but uh, they are hard to find. Now also, uh, this ball wears out really bad right here, uh, where it starts uh, rocking back and forth, and you start getting a lot of play in here. And we take that ball out and put a sleeve in here where it starts using the whole bore instead of just a, a check ball right here on the end. So a little bit of that's wear. a good upgrade right there on those two. Uh, makes it uh, not being hard to pull out a park and stuff like that because these have that issue. Now it does have an aftermarket aluminum uh, accumulator piston. It's got the stock spring in it, but it does have an aftermarket to, instead of a plastic one.
Now, you look here, it does have the uh, updated, uh, not the lever, but the strut, the band struts up here. This will be factory, but the original one is real thin, and this is a real thick unit here. They make them in different versions, uh, but this is an updated piece here. Basically, this is the front pump here. We're gonna take this apart and look at it really quick and see what type of pump it is. Now this, uh, being that new, it should have a 48 RE pump. Now, by looking at the stator, it's not a 48RE stator, it would have a sealing ring in here. Uh, they did do them in the 47s and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it does have a smaller pump in it than a 48. Uh, it's a lot smaller gear. So we see a lot of this uh, all the time. So but we will upgrade this to a 48RE pump. Now you notice the band, it's just totally cooked. It had a good band in it at one time. Uh, it does have the early models uh, three-speed style band and that's what we'll put back in it. It's a better band. So it's just cooked. Now let, let's talk about in place uh, or clearance stator really quick. Uh, this here is your uh, pump stator shim right here. Uh, there's different uh, variations of thicknesses on this here. Uh, to set your uh, cl clearance in between your stator and your drum. Now also you get in here, now you have another one. Uh, there's different clearances here too. So uh, we like to really get this drum here deep into here when it's setting in here. Uh, a lot of guys uh, don't set it up right and this edge of this drum right here is just barely hanging on the end of it right here. And then we set them up, we like to get them as deep as we can. So he's talking about these, yeah, these right. lugs right here. So the squares look in here, when I set this down in here, they're locked in, in that area like that. Yes, sir. Well, when you get this set up, they can be out here on the edge like that. Yep. See, and, and if you, it gets too far out, it can cause a lot of load going forwards or backwards. You need to get it as deep as you can. Come over here, Trent, look at it here. Okay. Let's see what I'm talking about. Oh, Let me get over here. Yep. But see here, like that, see how that sets in there? We get them in here a lot and it's setting out here like this. You can tell where that one's been rubbing. Mm -hmm. yeah, see, it, so it makes it, and if you get in here too, here's another uh, spacer here too that's adjustable. This washer right here that sets up in here. So here's three more places that you can set this clearances up on this training. Here, here, and here. Right here, and right here. So, this unit, you better know what you're doing. I mean, this ain't for your average uh, person to mess with, so. He's not lying. No, this is bad. Now. get in here since this uh the 48 re drums are really hard to come by 
so they used the 47s. The 48 RE always had a five clutch drum. The 47s and stuff had a four clutch. So they moved the snap ring groove up and down here in this drum to uh, compromise for the, how many clutches we put in there. So if you get uh, an aftermarket drum like we have to get a lot of times, if you notice here, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, clutches had to stack it different to get it to work. Sorry, he's important, man. Sorry. Uh, but to get it to work, they had to stack, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. I thought they did. I thought I had another one there, but I guess not. One, two, three, four. There's five clutches in there. But it's a kit you get that comes with this shaved right here to allow for that extra clutch and steel to be put in there. So basically, this was a three or four clutch drum to start out with. Mm, see? Okay. They shaved this plate. Right. That way you can add another clutch of steel, and now they've made a five clutch drum like a 48RE. Right. See? Gotcha. So, you never want to go back with a four clutch. Always a five, no matter what. Okay. I mean, these things make so much power when you chip them and stuff. You're going to really beat them up. Now, they did leave the wavy snap ring in here. I would have done away with that. I would have went with a, a thick one, a solid one. I got one right here. Uh, actually, that goes in there. You can see it's flat. But this one here's wavy. You're going to get rid of this wave and put this flat one in there for third gear. So. Trick to the tray. Yeah, yeah. And that did only look like it had four clutches in it for the second. They were so thin. Mm -hmm. It's just gone. Now, they actually did something I've never done. I've never had an issue with the four clutches holding the truck going forward. But they added a fifth clutch by doing the same thing, putting a plate, machining it down, and then uh, still the flat snap ring here, though you don't want to do that in a forward because your, your wavy snap ring is physically right here. So you don't want to put two wavy snap rings in forward. See that way they snap ring. Yeah. So when you put a gear, that snap ring right there cushions the engagement. Same as your bevel plate right here. You got your forward piston ring and seals. Now this is a billet drum. I don't know what horsepower it's rated at or anything like that, but this is not a factory drum. And we can tell just by the the sound of it. I mean it's Totally different. So I see a few upgrades. See a few burned up parts. Wow. Um, unfortunately. I mean, this is, uh, it's, it's got the early, early stuff in it. I mean, this tranny really doesn't even belong in this truck, really, for uh, uh, the year of it. This is an early, early design. Now, being that it's a 2007 uh, 5948RE, it should have physically all six pinion planets back here in the, in the back. through here on the end from this uh what i did to the washer now this is just a stock shaft it's not billet or nothing like that yeah this washer right here uh, hard yeah it starts pushing here and where you get a lot of this stuff going back and forth and clearances get off this tranny can beat itself to death just by that by that but uh we get into uh being gas diesel stuff like that now being that this has aluminum planet back here in the back, uh, it's a four pinion planet. This could, this is a really early unit. This is uh, 96, seven, stuff like that stuff. Uh, it's just a, 
aluminum four pinion instead of it should be in a light model like that it should be all steel stuff it should have a six pinion steel plant in the back a big old thick washers back here instead of this washer running against the plate like that uh, it should basically have Set here, but real big washer. We'll make another video. Yeah, should have a washer like this back here, but a great big one. It's about this wide, and this planet should be steel. So this train needs a lot of upgrades. It's got early model shell and stuff in it too. The bushing is a lot bad. Yeah, the bushing right there. It's this train is in bad shape. Wow. Well. That's why we get all these Dodges in here and, and we see these Fords too where uh, they've just changed parts out on them because what they have. So, uh, this train is in really bad shape. Uh, to put it back heavy duty for a diesel, it's going to take a lot. Uh, to put all the six pinion planets back in the back, you know, and all that type of stuff. And then, uh, the physical hours it's going to take to set all this stuff up because all this stuff has been changed. Uh, that's when you get into your seven hour bid, uh, builds and stuff like that. So, van still looks really good. One of the best looking things in the unit. The lower sprag assembly. You always want to check these right here. Uh, your cooler flow comes in right here, lubricates this. The very first thing in the unit, the very back cooler line is in the back. It comes in through here, right here, and then lubricates the, all this from the center of the tranny both directions. But it always wipes this out right here because it's against this big old hub like that. Any type of metal gets caught in there and it just goes, it just chews it all up. So. Seeing a lot of these ring gears right here starting to walk. This thing right here will walk out a little bit, start rubbing on the back of here. Right through here, it'll start rubbing. So you can take a tap of back in there and get a punch and start staking this thing back in all the way around and save that case. That's just so bad it can't be saved. So. I think it does have a billet uh, reverse uh, servo right here. A billet one, I believe. I want to show you that one. No, nope, it's just stock. I thought it was billet. Looks shiny. Yeah, it looks shiny. <laughs> like it's going to have some <clears throat> meanness to it. <laughs> Up this stock stuff on the servos and stuff, so it's going to take a lot to put this training back together. It's, it's so much stuff that's been changed on that needs to go back to the diesel stuff. Uh, it's going to be a sad phone call to make to the customer, but we're going to make it. And we're going to build it right the first time only, so y'all stay tuned. Have a good day.